In this video, I'll show you how the slab foundation for our house was built, including the dirt pad, the footings, the plumbing drains, and the concrete pour. But let me start by quickly explaining what a passive solar build is. It means designing a home to naturally heat itself using the sun and cool itself using the ground. Large windows face south, allowing winter sun, which sits lower in the sky, to pour in and warm the concrete floors, which we'll leave bare to absorb and store heat but we'll also build awnings to block the higher summer sun. With the right measurements, the windows will get no direct sun from about March 20th through September 20th, our hottest months. And because the concrete slab is buried in the earth, it will stay close to the cooler ground temperature, helping the house stay comfortable even in the heat. There are other elements to a passive solar home too, but these are the basics for our build. I showed you in my first video of the property what the build site looked like when we bought the property in December, sparsely wooded on a south-facing slope. Before moving onto the property, the company we hired to put in the slab foundation had finished the dirt work, bringing in fill to level the site. I originally pictured the house built into the hillside, but that would have made the foundation more complicated and expensive. In the end, I like that the house will sit a little higher on the lot. You can see the difference from when I did an imaginary house walkthrough in December. The door is right here. This will be a porch. You can see that's what these flags are uh, put out for. This is me walking along the uh, porch. And then southeast corner of the house, uh, more porch here. walk into the kitchen area. You can see where the septic tank is there. French doors opening onto the south porch. You can see they put in a decent amount of dirt here, all this fill dirt. We're probably going to want to clear some trees just to get a little bit more of a view. This is all our property out this way. And then I want to plant uh, the food forest down there. We got to see exactly where the sun is in the dead of winter. And there won't be leaves on the trees, but we definitely want enough of that sun coming in from the south to hit through the windows. The next step was to lay out the forms, which our concrete guy did with the help of a little child labor, which personally I support. It's character building. Then a layer of gravel. You can see where the concrete will go deeper for the footings around the entire perimeter. We didn't realize the slab would need to be almost completely backfilled on the sides to get it deep enough below the frost line, which will make building a deck a little bit trickier, but we'll burn that bridge when we get to it. Then it was time to lay the drain pipes for the house. On the left is the drain for the downstairs half bathroom toilet, then the sink, and furthest right is where everything will drain from the two upstairs full bathrooms and washing machine. The blue pex is the incoming water. On the right here is where the kitchen sink and dishwasher will drain, and the conduit is to run electricity to the kitchen island. The plumbing will all drain out here and eventually be connected to the septic tank. Then they tamped down the gravel to compact it and added a moisture slash radon barrier. We also asked the concrete guy to add foam insulation boards to the slab, which should help regulate the temperature year round. In winter, it keeps heat from escaping into the ground, and in summer, it helps block outside heat from warming the slab. He came back to attach more insulation to the sides of the slab later. Rebar went on top of the foam, and then it was time to pour. He upgraded to a full-size employee for this part.
This is the power trowel, or floating machine, to smooth and level it. After, we tried to keep the slab wet for a few days to cool it off, which helped prevent cracks by cooling it more slowly. The rain helped. He also added some relief lines for the inevitable cracks to hopefully follow. We told him we were using the concrete slab as our finished floor, and he was able to make it really smooth. We've been keeping it wet. I'm going to wet it again in just a minute, but I was just kind of looking at it dry for the first time. Because when it was wet, it looks so good. And I was like, I might just keep it that way and not, I was, the plan is to grind and polish and seal. And now, even when it's dry, it's obviously not perfect. The, the flaws in this are kind of cool. I don't know. I think I'm gonna skip the grinding and sanding part and just skip to sealing it. Let me know in the comments if you think this will look good as the finished floor in our house. I took three weeks off from work for the next step of the process, which is framing, which we're doing ourselves. We'll start on that in the next video. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of the build, and please like this video if you enjoyed it.